astrology of 2021. I would call it the war of the Brahmins. The main defining thing that is going on this year is that in the mundane astrology, the Lunar New Year charts, <clears throat> we have Venus and Jupiter both in a planetary war, okay? And so this is, these are the planets of our, these are both the Brahmins of the Zodiac. So this is showing that there is a war of the Brahmins, a war of people's beliefs, a war of the ideologies, a war of, um, a war of information, a war of knowledge, a war of intelligence, and a war of philosophies. And, and really like Venus and Jupiter are both philosophers and are both have their own kind of perspectives, but they're a little bit different. And so we're seeing this conflict going on right now. So in the previous live stream, I mentioned a lot of things and then I didn't get to like share screens or show the technical stuff because I haven't taken, you know, forever to learn how to, how to do live streaming yet. So I'm just gonna make this video to kind of uh, flesh out and explain and elaborate more on what I was talking in the previous one. So go and watch that live stream too, if, if this is interesting to you. <clears throat> but basically we are, 2020 was more objectively messed up and I'm gonna show that right now. But then 2021 was the year that the mundane astrology shows how psychologically messed up it is. And this more this war on ideas and information that's going on this year. But first, let's backtrack a little bit and look at the astrology of 2020 and see why was 2020 so terrible? <laughs> um, well, you, know, you can watch some other great videos on this that have elaborated on it more, but the basic gist of it is that the basic gist of it is that um, 2020, we had this really, really, really bad eclipse that was coming up for a long time. And I've talked about that in previous videos. My astrology teacher, Ernst Wilhelm, my main teacher, uh, <clears throat> talked about that in 2017, about how this would be a major eclipse that would cause a lot of major health issues and survival issues for a lot of people because of everything being in signs of Saturn, which deal with surviving and um, nature. And Pluto was involved in this. Pluto and Saturn conjunctions always lead to the greatest like periods of just historical darkness, historical contraction. You know, um, the, uh, Rome fell during that a period like that. Um, you know, the Cold War started during a Saturn-Pluto period, you know, like just, it's, it's, it's really dark time. Um, and it's time when people have to kind of like contract um, from a previous period of expansion. Um, so this is the chart of 2020. I'm not going to keep going on and on about why that eclipse is so bad. You guys have already probably heard that if you're studying astrology. There were so many reasons it would take the, like a whole hour to explain why it was so bad. So just know that it was a really, really bad one. Um, and the, you'll see this is China's Lunar New Year chart. So this was China's chart for 2020. And the chart of 2020 for China should be very interesting, shouldn't it? Since kind of everything started in Wuhan, you know? So look at this. The ascendant is Capricorn where the eclipse is happening. This was the major, this was the, the sign of getting eclipse was Cap and Cancer. But Capricorn is the strong one. Capricorn is the one that has Saturn, the Lord of Capricorn, in his own sign, very strong. And Saturn is in a position where when Saturn, Jupiter, or when any planet is with K2 and Saturn, it's going to feel ashamed. So Jupiter is ashamed in this chart and debilitated. Um, so Saturn is China. And so it's saying that China is going to be shaming and harming Jupiter um, this year. Very interesting. Um, Saturn is also ruling Mercury, Sun, and Moon. Moon is the seventh Lord. So Saturn is ruling, so sorry, China is ruling other nations right now and dispositing them and putting them where it wants them to be in the year of 2020. It makes a lot of sense if you think about it. Um, and Mars is in the 12th, which is a hidden house. So that's kind of interesting, you know, hidden houses there. There's, you know, uh, Mars is scientists and chemistry and labs, 
you know, uh, Sagittarius is a sign of falls from a height. Um, so that's also very, very interesting. Um, but the, and I don't want to, I'm not trying to spend the whole, the whole video on just this chart, but you can basically tell China initiated this or, or something involving in, involving China kind of uh, appears to have started this. Now, whether it was started by uh, <clears throat> U.S. forces in China or some, who knows, I'm not going that deep, but we can just see that, yeah, it looks like <clears throat> China was the major like initiating factor um and the ruling planet of saturn you know the ruling planet in the first <clears throat> with the second lord, or being the second lord and with the third and the twelfth kind of does show like third is like planning and plotting and strategy and the twelfth is like hidden things and i don't know it's just very I'm just gonna leave it at that you know it's very revealing i think um and then if we look at the usa uh now this is the usa's mundane chart oh look at that USA is the opposite sign. USA is Cancer. So you have China over here in Capricorn. You have America and USA over here at Cancer rising. Rahu's on Cancer. So like Rahu is eclipsing the unit, the United States in 2020. Um, cancer is the sign of the lungs and the breath. Rahu is a sign of, is a plant of viruses. What Rahu and Cancer is also saying is figure out your inner life, figure out your emotional life. The people in America that were had healthy cancer were not nearly as affected as the people in America that were not focused on this water sign cancer element. Um, now, yeah, the Lord of the United States is the moon in this chart. Uh, you never want the moon to be, the moon is like the least, the moon can't govern well. The, the moon is not desirable to have for a year for like the Lord of your year in Varshafala or in mundane charts that shows instability, um, too much fluctuating. And that was surely true for us this year. The moon is going into the eighth house, the house of sudden breaks and changes, the house of an economic crash or a pandemic. So yeah, that makes a lot of sense that the United States is really the, that's the thing is China was back to normal within a few months of the virus. I mean, 2020 New Year's in China, they were partying in Wuhan. They were having massive raves and festival and like, it looked like a huge rave. And it, you know, you can look at the footage of people partying in Wuhan in New Year's and then America is on lockdown and everyone's afraid to, and you can't go. And so it's really obvious these mundane charts make it very clear that, yeah, USA got really roughed up by this. China might get bad repercussions later, but China was very strong in 2020, as you can see, because they were ruled by Capricorn and Saturn and everything. Um, Saturn is delighted by Jupiter um, <clears throat> and just overall very strong. And uh, Yeah, that kind of makes a lot of sense with what happened. The United States, we had our economy fall apart. Uh, we had, um, yeah, we had a lot more just like negative repercussions that we're, we still haven't recovered from and are still just like falling apart over. And that's really shown by the USA having its Logna Lord Moon in the eighth. Um, and the, you know, Sun and Moon are always conjunct on a new year chart. So they're always going to be together here. But they're both in the eighth and then with mercury which show which mercury is the media so then again showing how the media is going to be totally interconnected karmically with this conjunction the media is intimately connected with all this terribleness with everything falling apart and it's really undeniably true that if everyone just turned the meet the news off back in um a year ago like our country would be so much better off if we'd all just turned it all off you know um you know it's just like kill your tv that's the whole thing. That's why social media, that's why the internet, why YouTube and these things got popular because they were finally something to get away from mainstream programming. And then the mainstream, it only took about 10 or 15 years before the corporations bought up all of YouTube and Facebook and all that stuff and are now controlling that too. So we need to go and make a new internet or find a new thing that gets away from that. Um, and that in itself is kind of the planetary war that I'm talking about. Um, they're trying to, you know, the the great conjunction happened with Jupiter and Saturn having a planetary war in Shravana, the star of dialogue and conversation. Um, and you, look here, 
<laughs> I didn't even notice it, but the moon, the Lagna Lord of, of uh, the USA chart, moon and sun are both in Travana. Again, dialogue, talking, conversation. So it's showing how like, you know, media and all this, this is all terrible. And it's involved with like the suppression of the dialogue, suppression of the narrative. People are not being allowed to speak. And this also speaks to cancel culture being way too uh toxic and going too far in the last uh, in the year of 2020 actually i think it went too far before that but either way um <clears throat> so yeah i mean that's uh that's enough on 2020 for now but that's the 2020 we can spend so long that we hopefully astrologers will be studying these charts for years but that shows you just in a in a nutshell how it kind of, you know, China really was the initiating party of all these events. And the USA kind of got really suffered really badly from that, um, from the pandemic and everything is still not recovered. But now we could look at the, the Chinese New Year for, all right, so now this is the USA's chart for 2021. So this is next year. The USA once again has a cancer rising and every planet is in the eighth house, dude. Uh, and uh, except Mars. But Mars is in an enemy, secretly enemy relationship to it. But Mars is a little bit stronger. Uh, Mars can be, you know, so Mars is one sort of helpful thing because in the 11th house too for the USA this year. And that's about it. <laughs> You know what I mean? And so it is a, this is just a psychologically horrible placement. Um, that's, that's speaking a lot to what's, what's gonna, what's been going on this year and what's gonna continue to go on this year. So 2020, the astrology for the US looked more objectively bad, like concrete, like in the Capricorn sense. And it was starting to be psychologically messed up with moon, sun and Mercury there. But then it's showing this year, Moon, Sun, and Mercury are still there. Mercury is now retrograde, stronger. It's like the media got more powerful somehow. What? How, how does that work? And Venus, Jupiter, and Saturn are also there. Oh, that's just a <clears throat> that's just a mess. In Vedic astrology, there's a rule that whenever there's four or more planets in a sign, it ruins the effects of that sign. And this has got six planets in a sign, so it's really, really bad. Um, and Again, you know, Capricorn is more about dealing with the external worlds and earth science, more about physical things like the food, the money, the, the, these things crash. Aquarius is more psychological. It's more about your mental health, your, uh, your psychological well-being. Um, you know, Aquarius is that sign of dealing with the emptiness in the, in the, in the, in the pot and the water. And they're trying to bear water, make life more bearable for everyone. Everyone needs water. Being a more universal helper. And it's really hard. <laughs> to do that this year with this chart and it's just showing how it's truly psychologically messed up and then the fact that venus and jupiter are so close right here that they're in planetary war means that the u.s is at a war of ideologies that's at the core of this psychological battle is that there's half the people are saying only listen to this and the other half is misinformation the other people are saying only listen to us and then their misinformation and so it's really, really messy right now. I mean, you just had uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger saying, screw your freedoms. You know, you all need to take this, this jab and stuff and screw your freedoms. Um, no, I'm sorry, Arnold, but you can go back to wherever, you know, your, your father was actually a member of the Nazi party. Arnold Schwarzenegger's father literally signed up and fought in World War II for the Nazis. And he... His son is here saying, screw your freedom. I'm sorry, but screw you, Arnold. You can take off. I don't like your ideologies and I don't care about your ideology. So that's kind of like what I'm getting at is there's a lot of that going on. Um, and it started even when Saturn and Jupiter moved into to Aquarius and Shravana, but then it carried on more with Venus and Jupiter and planetary war. The odds that both of those planetary wars would happen in one year is just so rare. So things like that keep coming up and, um, you know, like, and then with Rahu and Gemini, it's very important to hear both sides and to not be, you know, polar, too polarized uh, 
and fanatical about your beliefs. Like I'm a spiritual person. I'm a yogi. If you are also a spiritual person, you have no business in politics, really. I'm just telling you that you don't. You should you should still be aware and follow things like I am and have a broad understanding of things, but choose based on merits. It doesn't mean you shouldn't vote, but you should vote based on the merits of the person, not just based on, oh, he's got a red or a blue color attached to him. You know what I mean? That's absurd. And that's what's that's just psychologically dead to make that choice, to make a choice based off of that is not intelligent. It's not spiritual. But if you choose people based on merits, then that is actually in line with Vedic philosophy, you know? Um, but it's very hard to do that because people who have merit usually get silenced and suppressed um, before they get that opportunity to get to the place where you'll even hear about them. Um, so that's the USA chart. Now let's look at, um, that's the Haiti chart. Let's look at this one, the China. This is China's Lunar New Year chart for this year. Look, they're ruled by Jupiter. Jupiter is the one in planetary war, but they're losing it. So that shows something very good that possibly China has gotten a lot of more China, um, it seems that people are aware of what's going on and that China is not winning the war like they want it to be. Um, and uh, Mars is in the sixth though, they're still very strong and able to, you know, they're not gonna probably fall this year, but it shows that, and again, having K2 in Sag in the first shows that they're very much, uh, when you have K2 in the first, you believe everything depends on you and you. You know, and China's very, all about the party and our, you know, and our nation, our people, we must move forward. And, um, and they don't care about anyone else. And that's kind of being shown in this chart. You see, like for this year, they're only folk, K2 is what you really want. So in the first, you just, Rahu in the seventh is like, screw the party, screw the other, screw the other nations for this year. Um, and uh, I'm gonna leave it at that actually. Gotta be careful what I say here. Um, <clears throat> I'm sure some of y'all will hate what I'm saying and I don't care. I just got to get this off my chest. Um, oh, yeah, this is Haiti's chart. So Haiti, if you didn't know, the president of Haiti was assassinated in front of his daughter by someone who was pretty much proven to be an FBI informant at this point. The president of Haiti was strongly against taking the, the, the recommended procedure that the elite, the mainstream Jupiter authorities are telling us, the state-funded government authorities are telling us is totally safe and completely secure, but screw vitamin D and vitamin C is still not good for you, or ivermectin, no. But take this thing that's only had you know 18 months or, or whatever, a year and a half of uh, research on it. Um, so the president of Haiti, as a good president would, was like, actually, I'm not really big on this. And he rejected one of, the, the va one of them. It was the uh, AstraZeneca, which, by the way, uh, you know, if you're, you know, the elite love to sign things and use codes and symbols. Astra is Sanskrit for weapon. Uh, Neca means harmful. Look up the, the, the suffix or the root nec, like necrophiliac or ne Neca means causing injury. It literally means something that causes injury. Z means an N and is also a part of coded uh, stuff that some of these groups are into. So AstraZeneca literally means a weapon of harm. You guys are, y'all like astrology, like y'all read omens. Life is always telling you the answer. It's up to us if we have the awareness. So if you take something that says, that's literally titled weapon of harm on the thing and you take that and that's up to you. I hope you don't get harmed. But again, you're opening yourself, you might be opening yourself up to something from a spiritual standpoint that you don't need to be. So the president of Haiti rejected that one. He actually didn't reject all of them. He just rejected that one. And, um, and he also told his country, he told them that ginger root is very good for this. He was like, yeah, ginger root ap appears to be very, very helpful for healing, um, for healing this issue. And then <laughs> shortly after he was assassinated brutally, it's not like they even tried to pretend that he like accidentally died. He was just brutally assassinated. Um, so you know, Haiti obviously got hit 
pretty hard this year. And that's shown because they're also ruled by cancer. So they also had their moon in the eighth, really very little hope, you know what I mean? For them to be able to, you know, some of the other nations have more of a fighting chance, but Haiti's definitely having it rough this year um, because of them being a cancer. And again, being ruled by the moon, being thrown in that eighth house stuff. They're kind of just like the USA this year. Um, so it's actually not just the Haitian president, but five different presidents who have opposed the COVID vaccine have conveniently died and been replaced by the good by ones that are pro that. Presidents of Burundi, Swaziland, Eswatini, sorry if I don't know how to pronounce that, Tanzania, Ivory Coast, and Haiti all opposed the mainstream narrative on it and kicked against them, the V, and then they all died. How crazy is that? And um, yeah, you can, you can you know, study this more on your own uh, if you want, but uh, yeah, that's pretty crazy to think about. Um, so we are in a real planetary war going on right now. Um, here we have another article, men who killed Haiti president revealed as FBI informants as three presidents died after blocking it. This was, I guess, before all five had died or maybe they didn't know that but um <clears throat> yeah there's some evidence that there are even fbi informants involved so pretty obviously some some foul play at, at hand right here oh and then meanwhile just like you know this is just on some random science website because it's not getting picked up by the mainstream back in july they determined that yeah, they identified, uh, you know, that natural SARS-CoV-2 super immunity can, is again uh, naturally, basically they found uh, convalescent donors, like people recovering from it, had antibodies for 23 different variants. If you have that, you don't need to take these crazy experimental procedures. And that's why they don't want y'all knowing that. You know what I mean? That just having COVID and recovering from it is a zillion times less dangerous than taking experimental gene therapy, you know what I mean, which is really what that is. So that's pretty wild stuff um, going on there. And then here's the chart of India. Um, India is a Scorpio Lagna this year. So it has all these plants in the fourth house, which is um, a little bit better because it's all in an angle, at least. So India has at least all its plants in angle, excuse me. <clears throat> India has all of its planets and angles, and it's ruled by Mars, who's the only planet not in this terrible stellium, you know, this crazy syzygy of planets here that's just a mess. Um, so although Mars, you know, it is in the seventh house, which is a Maraca house, a killer house, it's in Barani Nakshatra, Nakshatra of death. Yes, there's been a major, there's, you know, it's not like it's been perfect, but India, I think, is actually coming out, has, has, has handled it well. And is coming out of it overall pretty well and is um india is actually one of the only people that are trying to um kind of resist the globalists uh on some level at least and you can kind of see that in their chart this year so india in my opinion is doing a little bit better um than other nations this year because of having it being a scorpio being ruled by mars having mars in an angle and being the only planet not involved with that that mess of things going on in Aquarius. Um, but being in the seventh means that there's a, like, a lot of uh, talk about India going on too, right? Um, so yeah, that's pretty much um, like, uh, we could look at, oh, Russia also looked a little bit stronger this year. I won't go into that right now because I don't have, I don't really have time to, but um, Here's like a, here's a headline that, um, yeah, here's a headline that kind of shows you some of the planetary war stuff going on in India. India has got so much pressure to just become, to like abandon everything that it has and become all globalist and modernized and, you know, everything. And so here's a funny headline where the New York Times specifically looks for anti-Hindu, anti-Modi candidates to spread propaganda. Um, they they basically had a job posting where they were looking for people who could who would who had that position. Um, that's really not right. You know that's really unethical. So get rid. Never never support the New York Times if you have if you want my opinion. 
Um, but uh, anyways, okay, we're gonna, and then one more thing I did, I don't know if I mentioned this, so I don't know if I showed you guys this, but this was what, <laughs> on January 8th, 2020, the eclipse, literally someone photographed the eclipse in the Persian Gulf with red devil horns. Like that was the moon eclipsing the sun. It literally showed up with red devil horns. Um, wow, you know what I mean? And then look who, look who else they gave devil horns to on Time Magazine's, you know, 100, you know, most influential people. Oh, wow, he's so great. Gave him little devil horns there, you know? How did someone not notice that? Um, also the tag of the elite, the MMMM. Three, 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 three. If you read that sideways, there's a, you know, 33. That's the, the Freemasons are obsessed with 33 and worshiping that. And, and also like other number combinations that add up to that. Like the pandemic was declared on March 11th, 311, three times 11 is 33. Um, 911 was a big event. Nine times 11 is 99, which is three sets of 33. Even that Afghanistan plane that took off that famous clip that got everybody worked up and there were, you know, Afghanis clinging to it. If you look at the plane, look at the number and it says 1109. These number signatures show up all the time when there are things going on that are, uh, <clears throat> I don't know, I can't really say it, but when there are just suspicious events coming up that, that you got to wonder about how they made it in the news and how other things didn't. So leave it at that, you guys. Hate it or love it. That's my thoughts on it. Crazy Aquarius, Corey signing off.